Today we will talk about the 10 most mysterious beings of the Bible, those wrapped in mystery, tradition and interpretations that cross millennia. From fallen angels who defy the heavenly order, to prophets who speak riddles and apocalyptic beasts with powers beyond human comprehension. Have you ever wondered about the true nature of Behemoth or who was the Leviathan mentioned in the Bible? What about the mysterious Melchizedek who appears and disappears with divine messages? In this video, we'll dive into the fascinating and often enigmatic stories of these creatures. Some of these figures challenge our understanding of good and evil, while others bring messages that still influence the world today. Number one, the 24 dwarfs. This is one of the most intriguing riddles in the Bible. They arise in a heavenly setting, gathered around a larger throne in a crystal-like sea of glass under a sky curdled with stars and in the presence of one who lives eternally. Dressed in white with crowns of gold over their heads, they represent an element of authority and holiness. But who are they? And why precisely 24? These enigmatic beings are not angels, but seem to occupy a prominent role in heavenly worship and administration. They appear at key moments in the book of Revelation, bringing with them an air of majesty and mystery. John, in the solitude of Patmos, is transported in spirit to a divine reality, where the veil between the temporal and the eternal is removed. He finds himself before a divine throne, surrounded by 24 smaller thrones. The elders, sitting on their thrones, participate in a heavenly service, casting their crowns at the foot of the throne and worshipping the one who lives forever. This richly symbolic scene demonstrates heavenly order and constant worship. The presence of supernatural elements in John's vision, like lightning, thunder and living creatures full of eyes, accentuates the transcendental character of experience. The elders, inserted in this scenario, play a crucial role, acting as mediators of worship and revelation. There are several theories about the identity of the 24 elders. Some suggest that they would be high-order angelic beings. Others, noting the symbolism of the number 24 as representing fullness and authority, propose that they symbolize the totality of God's people, encompassing both the Old and New Testaments. The most engaging and widely accepted theory suggests that the 24 elders represent the church, the assembly of the redeemed. This interpretation is reinforced by the fact that they are dressed in white, a symbol of purity conferred by redemption, and by wearing crowns, indicating victory and royalty. They would therefore be representatives of redeemed humanity, participating in heavenly worship and sharing in eternal glory. This vision of John, therefore, not only reveals the mysteries of the divine, but also offers a message of hope. The presence of the 24 elders symbolizes the promise of participation in heavenly glory for those who remain faithful. They are a reminder of the final victory over evil and the promise of an eternity alongside the Creator. The history of the 24 elders is an invitation to reflect on mystery, adoration and hope. It takes us on a journey beyond the visible into the heart of the divine, where time and space merge into an eternal present. John's vision in Patmos, with its supernatural elements and enigmatic characters, challenges our understanding and at the same time inspires us to seek a deeper understanding of our own spirituality. Thus, as the winds blow over Patmos and the sun sets over the Aegean, the mystery of the 24 elders remains, a beacon of faith for those who seek to understand the divine paths and find their place in the eternal worship that resounds beyond the stars. They remind us that despite the tribulations of the world, there is a promise of redemption and participation in the glory that is beyond our wildest imagination. A history, therefore, not only of mystery, but of deep hope and unwavering faith. Number two, wheels in the vision of Ezekiel. In the calm of a day that seemed like so many others, by the river Kibar, Ezekiel, an exile far from his homeland, would experience something that would challenge the limits of human reality. He would become the protagonist of one of the most extraordinary visions recorded in biblical history, the vision of the wheels. This narrative not only captures the imagination, but serves as a powerful reminder of divine omnipresence and omniscience. In the midst of the desolation of exile, 
Ezekiel looked to heaven when suddenly the ordinary gave way to the extraordinary. He even opened and he saw visions of God. Among the wonders revealed, one in particular stood out. Four living creatures, each with four faces and four wings, moving in unison with a complexity and grace that challenged understanding. But there were more than just creatures in this vision. There were wheels. Ezekiel looked closely at the wheels that accompanied the creatures. They were wheels within wheels, so high that they seemed fearsome, full of eyes all around, symbolizing not only constant vigilance but also divine omniscience. These wheels could move in any direction without turning, reflecting the omnipresence of God, able to be everywhere, at all times, without restrictions. Ezekiel's description, though steeped in symbolism, conveys a clear message. There is no place where God's presence cannot reach. The wheels, with their ability to move freely in all directions, symbolize this deep truth, that the divine transcends the limits of space and time. To Ezekiel, and to those who read his words, the wheels in the vision were a reminder of God's sovereignty over the entire cosmos. Even in times of despair, like the Babylonian exile, the sight of the wheels served as a sign of hope. God was not confined to the temple in Jerusalem. He was present among his people, even in the foreign lands, watching, guiding, and protecting. The vision also spoke of the divine order in the midst of human chaos. The wheels, operating in perfect harmony with the living creatures, reflected a universe ordered and sustained by the divine will. In this system, every movement is intentional, every action is part of a larger plane, unfathomable to human eyes, but perfectly orchestrated by the Creator. The history of the wheels in Ezekiel's vision echoes through the centuries, offering valuable lessons for the contemporary world. In an age of unprecedented uncertainty and challenge, the message of divine omnipresence and omniscience serves as a beacon of hope. It reminds us that despite our limited perceptions, there is a constant presence that accompanies us, sees beyond what we can see, and operates beyond what we can understand. This narrative invites you to reflect on the nature of faith and the sovereignty of a higher power. It challenges us to look beyond the tangible, to seek comfort in the constant presence that the wheels symbolize. In moments of loneliness or despair, the story of Ezekiel reminds us that we are not alone, that there are eyes that see, ears that hear, and a presence that surrounds us, able to move in any direction to answer the call of their children. The vision of the wheels with its complexity and beauty remains one of the most captivating and enigmatic accounts of the Bible. It transcends the narrative of a prophet exilid to the banks of a distant river, becoming a universal story of faith, hope, and the unbreakable divine presence. For Ezekiel, for us, and for all future generations, the wheels are an eternal reminder that no matter where we are, God's omnipresence and omniscience surround us, guiding us through the labyrinths of life toward light. Number three, the Bimoti. In the tapestry woven by the biblical narrative, where heroes, kings, and prophets parade amid divine teachings and human trials, there is a creature that emerges from the shadows of mystery and antiquity with such a formidable presence that defies the imagination, the behemoth. Described in the book of Job, this colossal being occupies a prominent place in one of the deepest dialogues about suffering, divine justice, and the unfathomable power that rules the universe. Job, an upright, God-fearing man, finds himself in a whirlpool of loss and suffering, challenging the heavens with questions about divine justice. It is in this scenario of human despair and deep questioning that the behemoth is invoked, not only as a creature of untamed power, but as a manifestation of the natural world that is beyond human understanding and control. The behemote, described with features that each of the majestic and the fearsome, is often associated with a giant hippopotamus, an animal known for its strength and monumental size. However, the descriptions go further, painting the behemoth as a being that makes the waters boil like a pot and whose tail moves like a cedar. His ribs are like bars of iron. He is the first of God's works, destined to be approached only with the sword that created him. This enigmatic portrait has fueled debates among scholars, historians, and theologians about the true nature of the behemoth. Some see in it a prehistoric animal, 
perhaps a dinosaur, which survived in collective memory until it was recorded in the sacred text. Others interpret the behemoth symbolically, representing the chaos and the indomitable forces of nature that only the Creator can understand and tame. Regardless of its exact identity, the inclusion of the behemoth in the Book of Job serves deep narrative and theological purposes. In presenting this incomprehensible and indomitable creature, the biblical text highlights the human limitation before the divine creation. The behemoth is a reminder that, as much as man seeks to understand the world around him, there are mysteries and powers that transcend human reason. For Job, the behemoth symbolizes God's sovereignty over all things, whether they are understood or not. It challenges the notion that divine justice must conform to human expectations, pointing to a higher order where every creature, every event, has its place and purpose, even if they remain hidden from mortal eyes. The story of the behemoth resonates to this day, serving as a powerful reminder of our own finitude and the wonder of the unknown. In an era dominated by science and reason, the figure of the behemoth invites us to recognize the presence of mystery, the beauty of the unexplored and humility before the vast universe we inhabit. He teaches us to embrace unanswered questions, to find peace in uncertainty, and to trust in the divine wisdom that governs the order of things. The behemoth, therefore, is not just a creature of power and mystery. He is a symbol of human search for meaning in a world full of wonders and riddles. As we contemplate the behemoth, we are taken on a journey beyond the known, challenged to expand our understanding and deepen our faith. He remains in the pages of the Book of Job as a guardian of the mysteries of creation, a witness to the incomprehensible majesty that surrounds us. The story of the behemoth is an invitation to reflection, a call to humility and admiration before the infinite, reminding us that in the grand scheme of the universe, we are both observers and participants of a divine spectacle that transcends eternity. Number four, the Leviathan. In deep and dark waters, where the secrets of the world lie hidden and the sunlight barely touches the abyss, inhabits a creature whose existence is woven between myth and reality, fear and fascination. Leviathan, a being of unimaginable proportions and powers, is more than just a sea creature. He is a symbol of the indomitable, the mystery surrounding the ocean and the immense force that resides in the depths. The first mention of Leviathan is found in the ancient pages of the Book of Job, a text exploring human suffering and divine sovereignty. In it, Leviathan is described as a formidable creature whose power defies any human attempt at dominion. It is said that his skin is impenetrable, that fire and smoke flow from his nostrils, and that his heart is as firm as a stone. These descriptions evoke an image of something far beyond an animal. They paint the picture of an almost divine entity, an undisputed monarch of his aquatic kingdom. Leviathan transcends his physical form, becoming a powerful symbol of Chao's and primordial power. It represents the forces of nature that are beyond human control, the unpredictable and the fearsome. In ancient traditions, Leviathan was seen as the embodiment of evil, an adversary who would eventually be dominated at the end of time, symbolizing the victory of good over evil, order over chaos. However, Leviathan can also be seen in a different light. It embodies the sublime, terrifying and majestic beauty of nature that humbles and inspires us. Its existence reminds us of our smallness before the vast universe, the unexplored depths of the oceans, and the mysteries that are yet to be revealed. Over the centuries, the figure of Leviathan has captured the imagination of poets, artists and writers, inspiring works that explore the fascination and terror that the unknown awakens in us. The idea of such a powerful and mysterious creature inhabiting the depths of the ocean speaks to our intrinsic desire to explore and understand the world around us, while confronting us with the possibility that some mysteries may remain forever unfathomable. In the modern era, Leviathan still resonates as a reminder of the wonder and danger that accompany human exploration. He challenges us to face the unknown with respect and humility, recognizing that nature holds forces that can easily overcome us. The search for knowledge and understanding is a valuable journey, but the history of Leviathan teaches us that we must proceed with caution, respecting the limits of what we can control. 
Leviathan, with his majesty and mystery, remains one of the most enigmatic and powerful figures of literature and collective imagery. He is a symbol of human curiosity, of our incessant search for answers, and of the respect we owe to the immensity and power of nature. In essence, Leviathan is an invitation to look beyond the horizon, to dive into the depths of the unknown, always aware of the wonderful and terrible that can hide in the shadows of unexplored waters. He reminds us that even in the age of science and reason, there is still room for mystery, for the sublime, and for the recognition that some things can remain beyond the reach of human understanding. Number 5. The Cherubim In a world filled with divine mysteries and heavenly wonders, the cherubim occupy a place of honor and fascination. More than mere angelic figures, they are sacred guardians, beings of power and majesty who stand between the divine and the mortal. His presence is a testimony to the holiness of the spaces they protect and the profound symbolism he carries in spiritual traditions. Cherubim are known for their protective functions, serving as sentinels of the most sacred places. In the heart of the tabernacle, where the presence of God dwelt among his people, two golden cherubim stood majestic over the Ark of the Covenant. His great outstretched wings created a veil over the divine meeting place, symbolizing both the protection and reverence due to the holiness of God. The most enigmatic description of the cherubim, however, comes from the vision of the prophet Ezekiel. He sees them as creatures of astonishing aspect, each possessing four faces, of a man, a lion, an ox, and an eagle, and four wings covered with eyes, representing respectively nobility, strength, service, and ascension. These beings not only symbolize the fullness of living beings, but also the omniscience of God, observing and keeping all things. The presence of the cherubim in the holiest places serves as a constant reminder of the purity required to enter the divine presence. They are, at the same time, protectors and intercessors, representing the mercy of God that extends to human beings in their search for redemption. The image of the cherubim, therefore, is not only of fear and reverence, but also of hope and mediation between heaven and earth. The artistic representation of the cherubim throughout history reflects the human attempt to encapsulate their incomprehensible beauty and power. From sculptures in ancient temples to Renaissance paintings, the cherubs were portrayed in ways that seek to express their majesty and divine function. However, these representations are mere shadows of the true glory of these beings who inhabit a reality beyond mortal comprehension. In addition to their roles as guardians, the cherubim also act as divine messengers, bringing revelations and guidance. His presence in prophetic visions and sacred places is a sign of God's closeness and of his continuous communication with humanity. Through the cherubim we are reminded that the divine is not distant or indifferent, but actively involved in the world and life of his faithful. Cherubim, in essence, are a bridge between heaven and earth, between the divine and the human. They remind us of the majesty of God and his loving concern for creation. The story of these heavenly beings invites each of us to reflect on holiness, protection, and divine communication, inspiring us to seek a deeper relationship with the sacred. The cherubim, guardians of the holiest places, are also the protectors of the hearts of those who long for a closer connection with the divine, offering not only security but also guidance, and serving as a constant reminder of the beauty and power that transcends our everyday world. For those of you on your journeys of faith, seeking not only for guidance, but for strength and fellowship, I have something very special to share. In the first comment of this video, you will find a product designed exactly for your needs, an ebook that offers 52 weeks of deep reflections, daily practices and prayers, all inspired by the rich stories and biblical teachings. This valuable resource is designed to illuminate your path wisely, helping you cultivate a more intimate and powerful relationship with the divine. Number six, the story of Lucifer. In a time before time, when the cosmos was a symphony of light and harmony, there was a creature whose brightness rivaled that of the stars. Lucifer, known as the morning star, was a figure of incomparable beauty and immense power. He occupied a place of honor among the heavenly beings, praised for his wisdom and grace. 
but in his heart they fermented a pride that would become the spark for one of the most tragic and fascinating events of spiritual cosmology, his fall. Lucifer, the morning star, shone brightly in the heavens, adorned with precious stones and shining metals. His music, harmonious and powerful, led the heavenly choir in worship of the Creator. He was among the highest, an anointed cherub guardian of divine holiness, but within him a dissatisfaction grew. Pride in their own magnificence and growing envy of the throne of the Most High began to overshadow their brilliance. Lucifer's pride blinded him to the true nature of his existence, one creation among many, destined to serve and glorify the Creator. Convinced that he could ascend to a position equal to or superior to that of God, Lucifer sought to convince others to join him in his rebellion. The ensuing battle shook the heavens, a struggle not only of strength, but of will and conviction. The consequence of their rebellion was catastrophic. Lucifer, along with the angels that followed him, was cast out of heaven, falling from heavenly heights into darkness. Transformed from light bearer to shadow messenger, Lucifer became a figure of betrayal, pride and rebellion, an eternal symbol of the fall brought about by pride. The story of Lucifer, the morning star that became the darkness of the night, resonates through the ages as a powerful myth about the consequences of pride and disobedience. He is seen not only as a tragic character, but as a warning against pride and the temptation to put one's own desires above universal order and harmony. His fall marked the beginning of an eternal struggle between light and darkness, good and evil, with Lucifer taking on a new role as the adversary, the accuser, ceaselessly seeking to subvert creation and draw humanity away from the path of light. The myth of Lucifer, far from being a mere ancient story, speaks deeply to the challenges and temptations we face in our daily lives. He reminds us of the importance of humility, acceptance of our place in the universe, and vigilance against pride that can easily lead to destructive deviations. Lucifer's story is a rich and complex tapestry of light and shadows, of heavenly aspirations and tragic falls, it invites us to reflect on our own pride and rebellion, to seek true wisdom in humility, and to recognize beauty in our own ephemeral light. The fall of the morning star is an eternal reminder that even in the brightest of lights, pride can lead to the deepest of shadows, but also that even in the fall, there is room for redemption and learning. Number 7. The Melchizedek In an ancient world full of kings and prophets, warriors and sages, a figure emerges shrouded in mystery and reverence, whose history transcends the boundaries of time and human understanding. His name is Melchizedek, the King of Salem, the priest of the Most High God, whose presence in the biblical narrative is as brief as it is significant, casting a veil of mystery around his person and his functions as a priest eternally. The story takes us back to the patriarch Abraham, returning victorious from a battle to rescue his nephew Lot. In the Valley of Salem, which would come to be known as Jerusalem, Abraham is approached by Melchizedek, who brings bread and wine. This gesture of hospitality and blessing was not common among kings, but Melchizedek was no ordinary king. He blesses Abraham in the name of the Most High God, creator of heaven and earth, and Abraham, recognizing his spiritual greatness, offers him the tithe of everything. What makes Melchizedek a figure of deep interest and debate among theologians and scholars is his appointment as a priest of the Most High God at a time prior to the institution of the Levitical priests under the Mosaic law. Melchizedek represents a priest based not on lineage or inheritance, but on eternal and divine character. His sudden appearance and the absence of genealogy, death or succession in his narrative make him a type of priest without beginning of days or end of life. As mentioned it in the New Testament, in the New Testament, the figure of Melchizedek is taken up as a type of Christ, highlighting its similarities and meanings. Like Melchizedek, Jesus does not fit in as a Levistic priest. He inaugurates a new priesthood based on the Melchizedek order, which becomes eternal transcending time and death. The epistle to the Hebrews elaborates on this connection, presenting Jesus as the perfect high priest whose sacrifice and intercession overcome the limitations of the ancient sacrificial system. The mysterious nature of Melchizedek, his sudden appearance in history, aroused curiosity and speculation. 
Some see it as a pre-incarnate manifestation of Christ, while others consider it a supreme example of God's grace that transcends the established order. His story challenges our linear understanding of time and divine revelation, pointing to a spiritual reality deeper than conventional historical narratives. The story of Melchizedek invites us to reflect on the nature of true direct access to God that it symbolizes. He reminds us that faith and communion with the divine are not confined to systems and structures, but are available to all who sincerely seek God with open hearts. Melchizedek's legacy, therefore, is an invitation to reflect on our own spiritual journey and on the ways in which we approach the sacred in our lives. The figure of Melchizedek, with his brief appearance in the tapestry of the biblical narrative, remains one of the most intriguing and fascinating mysteries of the sacred text. He is a beacon that illuminates the way to a deeper understanding of God's intercession and eternal presence in human history. His connection with Jesus Christ reinforces the message that in God we find that which is both old and new, temporal and eternal, incarnate in the person of Jesus, the true High Priest, according to the order of Melchizedek. Number 8. The Angel of Death At a time when ancient Egypt was at the height of its splendor, under the rule of a stubborn pharaoh, a drama of epic proportions unfolded, one that would change the course of history and leave an indelible mark on the traditions of countless cultures. This is the story of the Angel of Death, an enigmatic entity whose role in the last and most devastating of the Ten Plagues would mark the climax of the confrontation between God and Pharaoh, resulting in the liberation of the Israelites from slavery. Moses, once Prince of Egypt and now transformed into leader and deliverer of his people, faced Pharaoh with divine demands to deliver the Israelites. Every refusal of Pharaoh to obey led to a terrible plague. Sent as a sign of the power of the God of Israel, water turned to blood, swarms of locusts, palpable darkness, each plague a warning, each warning ignored. Until the last plague came, the most terrifying of all, the death of every firstborn in Egypt. At midnight, under a heaven that seemed to hold his breath, the angel of death descended upon Egypt. There was no Egyptian home, from the abode of the lowliest to the palaces of the great, that was immune to their passage. Grief would spread throughout the land, a pain so deep that it would finally break Pharaoh's resistance. The Israelites, however, were given a way to escape the terrible plague. Moses instructed each family to mark the doorposts of their doors with the blood of a sacrificed lamb, an act of faith that would serve as a sign for the angel of death to pass over these houses, sparing those inside. This act of divine protection not only saved the firstborn of Israel, but also served as a powerful symbol of redemption and the covenant between God and his people. The story of the angel of death is full of symbolism and profound lessons. It represents divine judgment on oppression and injustice, while underlining the mercy and protection offered to those who place their faith in the divine. The passage of the angel of death symbolizes a liberation, not only physical but spiritual, marking the beginning of a journey towards freedom and national identity for the Israelites. The memory of this terrible and miraculous night has been preserved through generations, especially in the celebration of the Passover, a feast commemorating the liberation of the Israelites from Egypt and their transition from slavery to freedom. Easter serves as an annual reminder of divine protection, the importance of obedience and faith, and the ability to overcome adversity. The story of the Angel of Death transcends its ancient context, touching hearts and minds through the centuries. It invites us to reflect on the forces of oppression and liberation in our own lives, on the sacrifices that are made in the name of freedom, and on the power of faith in the face of adversity. It reminds us that even in the darkest hours there is hope, and that the passage to a better future often requires faith to take the first step, even when the path ahead is uncertain. The angel of death, though a feared figure in the Exodus narrative, carries with him a message of hope and renewal. Its history is a testimony to the complexity of the human condition, the struggle between justice and tyranny, and the promise of freedom and redemption. As the shadows of that ancient night stretch through time, the echo of its passage continues to teach us 
to challenge us and to inspire us to seek light, even in the deepest darkness. Number 9. The Seraphim At a time when prophets were the bearers of divine visions and messengers of hopes and warnings, Isaiah, one of those chosen, was graced with a revelation that would transcend time and space, plunging him into the depths of the sacred. Amid this heavenly vision, the seraphim stood out as creatures of unspeakable majesty, six-winged angels who worship God ceaselessly, proclaiming his holiness and glory. Isaiah's vision carries him to the throne of God, a scene of incomparable power and splendor. It is here before this supernatural scenario that the seraphim make their appearance, luminous beings that inhabit the direct presence of the divine. With two wings, they covered their faces as a sign of humility and reverence. With two, they covered their feet, symbolizing respect and submission. And with the last two, they flew, ready to serve the Almighty. The song of the seraphim resounds through the heavenly throne. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. All the earth is full of his glory. These words, more than simple worship, are a proclamation of God's transcendence, His purity, and His unlimited power. The triple repetition of saint is not casual. It emphasizes the supreme holiness of God, an attribute so vast that no human term could fully capture its essence. In the presence of the seraphim and the glory of God, Isaiah finds himself confronted with his own unworthiness. Woe to me, I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips. The answer to this confession of Isaiah is swift and merciful. One of the seraphim flies to him with a living ember, touching his lips and declaring, See, this has touched his lips. His guilt is taken away and his sin is forgiven. This act of purification symbolizes the transformation necessary for Isaiah to fulfill his mission as God's prophet. Seraphim, in essence, are not only worshippers but also agents of purification and transformation. They exist in a reality where time and matter bend to the divine will, serving as bridges between the sacred and the profane, the heavenly and the earthly. His interaction with Isaiah reveals that even in the face of God's unimaginable holiness, there is room for mercy and purification. The story of the seraphim, as revealed to Isaiah, is a source of inspiration and wonder. It leads us to contemplate the greatness of God and to reflect on the nature of true worship. Seraphim, with their unwavering devotion and eternal service, invite us to seek a deeper relationship with the divine, recognizing our own need for purification and renewal. The canticle of the seraphim, holy, 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 echoes through the centuries, finding resonance in the hearts of all who seek to understand and experience the holiness of God. His presence in Isaiah's vision serves as a reminder of the divine call to holiness, genuine worship, and faithful service. The seraphim, with their six wings and their unceasing praise, remain one of the most captivating and mysterious images of Judeo-Christian spirituality. His story is not just a narrative about heavenly beings, it is an invitation for each of us to go deeper into the mystery of God's presence, to seek the purification of our lives, and to dedicate ourselves to worship and the service of the divine. In its light, we are invited to transform our being in order to reflect a little more of the glory and holiness that the seraphim proclaim eternally. Number 10. The Demons In a world where light and darkness wage an eternal battle, demons occupy a dark realm populated by beings as old as time itself. These entities, born from the shadows and fed by human fears and desires, weave stories that challenge our understanding of reality and the supernatural. The nature of demons, their intentions and interactions with humanity offer a fascinating glimpse of the power of the unknown and the unseen. The origin of demons is a subject of debate and speculation involving religious and mythological traditions from around the world. Some believe they are fallen angels cast out of heaven for their rebellion, while others see them as evil spirits born of primordial and chaotic forces. Regardless of their origins, Demons are often associated with destruction, deception and temptation, seeking to subvert the natural and spiritual order for their own nefarious purposes. Demons are masters of manipulation, using their abilities to influence, corrupt and destroy. His intention is not only to cause physical harm, but also spiritual and emotional, taking advantage of human weaknesses to sow discord and hopelessness. 
They operate in the shadows, preferring subtlety to direct confrontation, entangling souls in webs of lies and despair. The interaction of demons with humanity is a recurring theme in tales and legends around the globe. These entities are said to be able to possess, haunt or even make packs with humans, offering power or knowledge in exchange for a terrible price. Stories of demonic possessions, for example, relate individuals taken by supernatural forces, losing control of their actions and words, becoming puppets in the hands of their invisible oppressors. Demons are often portrayed as beings seeking power and dominion, not only over mortals, but also over other beings of the supernatural realm. Their battles and intrigues are a distorted reflection of human power struggles, albeit on an infinitely more dangerous and complex scale. In this dark game, demons use every tool at their disposal, from seduction to brute force, to achieve their nefarious goals. Against demonic forces, humanity has developed a variety of methods of protection and defense. Rituals, amulets, prayers and exorcisms are some of the practices used to repel or imprison these beings. However, the most powerful weapon in the human arsenal against demons can be willpower and purity of heart, for it is in weakness and fear that demons find their greatest opportunities. The fascination with demons and their interactions with humanity remain strong, fueling urban stories, films and legends. They embody our deepest fears and our inner struggles, serving as a dark mirror to our own nature. By exploring the realm of demons, we confront not only external evil, but also the shadows within ourselves. Demons, with their terrifying characteristics and enigmatic nature, continue to inhabit the threshold between the known and the unknown, the seen and the invisible. They remind us that in a world where light and darkness coexist, vigilance and spirit power are essential to navigating the turbulent waters of human existence. The stories of demons and their interactions with humanity are not only tales of warning, they are also narratives of resistance, redemption, and sometimes reconciliation with the unknown depths of our world and ourselves. In a world intertwined by narratives of light and darkness, the saga between humanity and an ancient adversary unfolds with an intensity that transcends time. This story, rich in drama and spiritual significance, explores Satan's deep enmity for humanity, his insidious attempt to corrupt the image of God in us, and the incessant spiritual battle unfolding between heaven and earth. Since the dawn of creation, when humanity was formed in the image and likeness of the Creator, an immense hatred has sprung up in Satan's heart. It was not only envy of the honorable position that humans occupied in the heart of God, but a repudiation for the very essence of what it means to be created in the divine image, free, loved and endowed with an eternal spirit. Satan, in his malice, turned to the task of disfiguring this image by introducing sin into God's perfect world. The Garden of Eden was only the beginning of their machinations, an act of rebellion that aimed not only to drive humanity away from their Creator, but also to corrupt the purity of the connection they shared. Every temptation, every lie, every whisper of doubt seeks to extinguish the divine light within use, replacing it with the shadow of sin. However, the heart of the Christian narrative resounds with the promise of redemption and the certainty of victory. God's intervention in human history through the life, death and resurrection of Jesus Christ represents the divine counterpart to Satan's attack. Christ, in overcoming death, offered a way back to the restoration, not only of the broken relationship with God, but also of the very divine image within us. This story, however, is not without its continuous chapters of conflict and challenge. The spiritual battle between light and darkness, between divine truth and Satan's lies, continues daily in the lives of believers. Every decision for love, every act of forgiveness, every moment of trust in God is a blow against the forces that seek to destroy us. The heart of this spiritual saga beats with the promise of final restoration for all who put their faith in Christ. The image of God, though disfigured by sin, is destined to be completely renewed, reflecting once again the glory of His Creator. This is the hope that sustains believers through the trials of this life, the certainty that in the end, the true nature and destiny of humanity will be restored to fullness. The history of humanity 
seen through the prism of the Christian faith, is a narrative of fall and redemption, of battle and victory. Amid Satan's strategies to corrupt and destroy, God's loving intervention offers light in darkness, hope in despair. We are reminded that despite the storms of life and the opposing spiritual forces, the image of God within us is precious, worthy of being redeemed and restored. And in the cross of Christ, we find not only the victory over sin and death, but the promise that in the end, we will be fully restored to the image of the one who created us out of love. And for those of you thirsting for more knowledge and depth in the sacred scriptures, I will leave a suggested video here to expand your understanding and appreciation of the complete Bible story in a unique and revealing way. This resource is an invitation to delve even deeper into the rich narratives and teachings that form the basis of our faith and spirituality. I'll see you in a few seconds.